go into it, science thinking that you'll have some impact that's sort of more permanent maybe, you'll find some truth and then you realize that truths get overturned and it's not so easy and it's not always obvious what will be there. But I think the fact that you can work things out, that you can test them, um, there's something very reassuring about that. Even though what, what doing science is about is sort of answering questions you don't know the answer to, at the end of the day you sort of have this overriding belief that some things will be known. I do theoretical particle physics, first of all. And so we're trying to understand the substructure of matter. That is to say, we're trying to understand what are matter's most basic elements. How do they interact? Um, we're also, uh, the kind of work I do also interfaces with cosmology at times, understanding how the, what's in the universe, how it's evolved, how to explain the properties of what we've observed there as well. We're trying to understand questions like what are masses, why are they what they are? How are those masses related, or why are they related in the way they are? What are the forces related in some way? Were they unified? I hope you all know where three dimensions are, which you can say are left, right, forward, backward, up, down. And if you think about it, three, we say there's three dimensions of space. In some sense, we need three coordinates to locate some objects in space. So you can say longitude, latitude, and altitude. So if there were more dimensions, you would need more coordinates. Now, of course, for whatever reason, we are not physiologically designed to observe those dimensions. But that doesn't mean they don't exist. And if a hypersphere, or say a four-dimensional sphere, passed through our universe, we would see a series of spheres that grew in size and then decreased in size. It's the fact that we don't observe those extra dimensions doesn't mean they don't exist. And they are hard to conceptualize. They're certainly hard to visualize. But we can think about them mathematically and conceptually without too much trouble. What we're going to do, what not me, but experimenters will do, is look for evidence of particles associated with travel in the extra dimensions. That is to say, if particles traveled in the extra dimensions, there would be partner particles called Kaluza-Klein particles that are like the particles we know about. They have properties that interact similarly, but they have mass, and their mass reflects the extra dimensional geometry. That's because they have momentum in those extra dimensions. And so what we'll do is look for evidence of these extra Kaluza-Klein particles. And if we see them, and if they have the properties that we predict, it would be evidence for extra dimensions. That you could actually have an infinite dimension of space that's an extra dimension, a fourth dimension of space that you don't see. And this was really radical in the sense that since the, basically physicists always thought that if you had extra dimensions they had to be tiny because we don't see them. And it's pretty intuitive. If something's really small, you don't see it. And so the idea that you had very curled up or finite sized extra dimensions. And that was basically what people thought was essential for us not to see them. It turns out that this strong warping that we discovered could also mean that gravity is so concentrated that you don't see an extra dimension of space. So that could have radical implications, obviously, for our universe. People have been looking for a candidate theory of what's called quantum gravity for some time. So string theory is a theory of quantum gravity, or it's a candidate theory of quantum gravity. And it's based on the idea that fundamentally, we don't have elementary particles, but we have fundamental oscillating strings. And particles are the oscillation modes of those strings. And, and if you, you can say, how could we not notice that it's strings and not particles? But if you think about it, if the strings are really tiny, they look like particles. We can't see it. To see that it's actually a string, you'd have to see the additional oscillations that a string can have. And to do that, you'd have to be able to test the energies of, that it would take to make a string oscillate. Kaluza was the first person who introduced the idea of an extra dimension of physics in 1919. And he was trying to unify the forces that were known then, which were only gravity and electromagnetism. And he proposed the, an extra dimension of space. To try, and he realized Einstein's theory allowed an extra dimension, and he tried to work out the consequences of the theory. Um, Klein was the person who suggested that this extra dimension was tiny, it was rolled up, and that's why we don't see it. So Kaluza Klein particles are named after the two of them. I think, if, if anything, I have a belief which is shot down time and time again that things should make sense. <laughs> and you know, often you look around you in the world and things don't make sense, but I really want them to make sense. So I think it's sort of an internal drive to try to make sense of the world that probably drives what I do. It's not so much belief, it's more just really wanting them to make sense.
there's a truth that we know because it applies to the world as we've seen it, as we've measured it. That's not to say that there can't be other underlying truths that you can see. If you could, under, if you could really see things better, if you could test them better, if you could measure them better. Um, so I think anything we know could be upset if you look at regimes outside of the regime of which we've studied them. So, but that's not to say the truth isn't absolute. It's as absolute at the scales that we've seen it. But it's just not absolute in the sense of applying at the most fundamental scales.